Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News. Good afternoon. Once again, a father is scrambling to find his children new Christmas gifts following a burglary. Germonta Sturgis says someone broke into his home on West 7th Street last night. The gifts included an Xbox 360 toys, clothes, and shoes. Sturgis says the burglar didn't take anything else. I walked in my house. I noticed my couch pillows were just, my house was ransacked, and then I started looking for things missing, and the only things I noticed missing were the things I bought for my kids for Christmas. Now, investigators don't know who is responsible for the break in. Several children were injured in a school bus crash this morning. It happened just after 7 on Big Beach Branch Road in the DeWitt community of Knox County. Now, the bus was on the way to DeWitt Elementary. Officials have not released many details about the crash or what led up to it, but we do know that nine children were on the bus. One went to the hospital. A few others were treated for scratches and cuts. Investigators have released the name of a man wanted in an animal cruelty case. The Moorhead News reports there's now an animal cruelty warrant for Ricky G. Investigators found two starved and injured dogs outside a Rowan County home last week. One of the dogs died. A rescue group called STAR is helping nurse the other dog back to health. Still no arrest in Lexington's latest murder. Police say someone shot a man to death yesterday morning on Augusta Court. Police continue to investigate what led up to that shooting. Witnesses reported hearing gunshots, then seeing the victim lying on the ground. The coroner has not identified the man killed. A man who sparked an amber alert involving a newborn baby is still on the run. Police say the man stole an SUV from a Kenton County gas station with Henry Flores in the back seat. Two women found the car at a different gas station in nearby Fort Mitchell with the baby safe and asleep inside. We saw each other, we hugged and um, made sure that the baby was okay and we hugged and I just, we just you know, crying. crying and stuff. So. Just to see the way that they reacted when they saw their baby again. I, mean, I can't imagine not, have, like for the amount of hours that they didn't have their baby today. I can't imagine. Now again, police are still searching for the driver who stole that car. They're looking through surveillance video from both gas stations. A new year and a new legislative session almost upon us. Today, state and local lawmakers gathered to discuss one of the items on their agenda for the upcoming year. WKYT's Whitney Wetzel has more. Whitney. Legislative leaders announced this local option sales tax will be the focus of House Bill 1 during next year's regular session. This proposal, known as LIFT, stands for Local Investments for Transformation. A local option sales tax would allow local communities to create a source of revenue through a limited and specific sales tax increase that has a predetermined end date. Those funds would then be invested back into the community for voter approved infrastructure projects that are decided by the citizens. That could include improvements to roads, firehouses, and parks, among many other things. 37 states already allow their communities to vote on whether to install a temporary sales tax dedicated to a specific project. Kentucky's proposal would require a penny or less. Supporters believe giving local communities this option will bring new businesses to Kentucky. If the local communities get these dollars uh, through this local effort, it will actually have a uh, positive impact upon the state's budget so that instead of having to spend state dollars for these projects in these local communities, it would potentially free up some state dollars. Now, if this proposed constitutional amendment is approved next year, voters will have a chance to support or oppose it in the November 2016 election. In Frankfurt, Whitney Wetzel, WKYT. Amendments to the state constitution can only appear on the ballot in even-numbered years. Well, it's going to be a cold but calm day across the area. We do have a few snowflakes in the forecast. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris is here with more on what we can expect for the weekend. Micah. Well, the snowflakes don't fall today. They actually fall tomorrow and 
also toward Christmas. So we have a lot to talk about in your seven-day forecast, your full forecast, that is, in about five to ten minutes. But first, you check out Defender. We have clouds overhead in most locations, a few breaks here and there, especially down toward the south and southeast. Temperatures are really cold. I mean, we're right around freezing. Even some locations in our viewing area, like Frankfurt, Lexington, Covington, the farther north you go, better likelihood of actually uh, staying below freezing at this moment. So let's go toward the rest of the afternoon. We'll have bits and pieces of sunshine, but I think mostly cloudy skies is the best call. Still very chilly at about 37 degrees. Tomorrow, a few flakes, and like I said, toward Christmas, we're still watching that system. I'll show you uh, what uh, the details are showing right now, coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Micah, thank you. Now that diplomatic relations are resuming between the U.S. and Cuba, some American companies are making plans to do business in Cuba. As Adriana Diaz shows us, it's a move that brings hope and excitement to many Cubans. Americana. Olga Lidia Hernandez owns a restaurant near the center of Havana. For business owners like her, the gravity of Raul Castro's speech is starting to set in. It's such a huge step, she says. For Cuba, it will be very good. With a business dependent on tourist dollars, she's hopeful that more Americans will visit Cuban shores once travel restrictions are lifted. We started off with room for 25. Now we can seat 50. And maybe in a few years, we'll seat 100. It's not just Cuban entrepreneurs that are optimistic. Major American companies, including MasterCard, Cisco, Marriott, Pepsi, Caterpillar, and Major League Baseball have all shown interest in doing business in Cuba. And it's a move that could rapidly transform a country virtually frozen in time since the U.S. embargo was imposed in 1960. The U.S. embargo has hurt Cuba tremendously. And it has hurt the average Cuban on the street tremendously in unnecessary ways. Repairing a relationship strained by more than 50 years of Cold War tension won't happen overnight. So for now, the embargo remains in place. Here in this Havana market, shoppers expressed a sense of relief, knowing that half a century of animosity may finally be coming to a close. More clothes, more shoes, more of everything, Carmen Bermuda said. Even food may be cheaper. Everything will be much better. For the majority of Cubans who'd grown accustomed to life under the embargo, this week's news provided hope for the future. Adriana Diaz, CBS News, Havana. And President Obama is expected to answer questions about Cuba during his year-end news conference at 1.30 this afternoon. A recall alert for Chrysler owners. The company is recalling 257,000 older Ram pickups. The recall covers Ram 1500 pickups from the 2005 model year. The rear axle can seize or the drive shaft can fall off. There have been 15 complaints, but no crashes, no injuries. Dealers will fix the problem for free. A simple drop of blood can determine your risk for type 2 diabetes and what exercise can do for those with prostate cancer. Ebony Williams has details in this Better Living report. Exercise may help prostate cancer patients live longer. That's according to researchers who followed 4,600 Swedish men for several years. They found patients who walked or cycled at least 20 minutes a day had a 39% lower risk of dying from prostate cancer. Your blood type could affect your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. A European study of more than 80,000 women finds people with type O blood are less likely to develop the disease than those with types A, B, or AB. Researchers say more study is needed to figure out why. And if you want to figure out how healthy your brain is, a new study says, try standing on one leg. Japanese researchers looked at MRIs of about 1,400 seniors. They found those who struggled to balance on one leg for at least 20 seconds were more likely to have blood vessel damage in the brain. Those are some of the day's top health stories. Ebony Williams, CBS News, New York.